rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. I'm excited to be here. A little bit, my voice is a little rusty because of yesterday's service. We had such Amen. a great time in the Hallelujah. presence of the Lord. Yes. It was a great occasion. Great and Amen. Ten years. The Lord and the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. was present. His presence was evident. It was our 10 years anniversary and also the launching of my books. Amen. Wedron, The Storm of Life, and Penny Wise Plan Polish. We thank God that uh, it was a great occasion and a new beginning for us, our family, and our ministry. Thank God for all of those of you who were able to come to support. And thank you for all of those people who bought the books that yesterday. <coughs> almost every book was sold out. We literally sold everything we brought there. Thank God for your Amen. Uh, that is good. And for those of you who are ordering online and have ordered online, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. The second badge of the Pennywise pamphlet is on its way. We shipped to arrive in New York City, our city, in couple of days and for those who are already booked theirs as well we will make contact to you so that you get your copy but I want to thank you all for this commitment the show of love God bless you it's such a wonderful privilege and opportunity to start this new journey with you in our ministry my wife and I and our ministry are very grateful everyone within the uh, new life redemption church we are grateful we thank you all <clears throat> and hallelujah we just bless the name of the Lord this morning because of our um, uh, in the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be speaking about uh, it's the first Sunday of the month in this year, 2021. Amen. Hallelujah. And Amen. also, I want to point out that in this month of December, towards uh, <clears throat> we are in Advent season, and uh, we have a three day fast coming up on the 29th, 30th, and 31st. Amen. And it's going to be a very wonderful fasting and prayer time, 7 6 to 6. Christ and a prayer. Please look out for the flyers and the information for the program. We have to order our steps. We have to prayerfully step into the new year with victory. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. But I'm excited to be here this morning. I want to talk to you concerning a very important sermon message. Hallelujah that the Lord dropped in my spirit even while I was in the service yesterday. And this message talks about, it says the just shall live by what? By faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen, amen. Very important message. The just shall live by faith. <clears throat> amen. The amen. just shall live by faith. So be, when we speak this morning, we're talking about the just shall live by faith in the book of Habakkuk. Our test this morning is Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 and also Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 and Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Those are the two tests. I'm going to be talking about other Bible, biblical tests that I'm going to be using as well to support. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, what I'm saying this morning. Hashtag uh, Abraham. Hashtag Mordecai. Hashtag Joseph. Hashtag David. Hashtag Paul. Amen. Peter. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a wonderful and promise keeper. Amen. He is a wonderful a prayer promise keeper. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So in the Old Testament, God spoke to the people through prophets, through dreams, through vision. Amen. In Amen. the Old Testament, yes. the people literally rely mm -hmm. a lot on the voice and the promise of God through the prophets, mm -hmm. through dreams, through vision in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And and and, and, uh, and in our time, in our season, in the time we live, God speaks to us through, Amen, through the pastors, mm -hmm. through the messages we preach, through the prophet, through the bishops. Yes. And God also speaks to us through dreams, but not as much uh, through dreams. But the dreams were not as much as back in the old time where they rely a lot on dreams and vision. God also speaks to us today through the Bible, through His Word. Amen. Through his words. This we are living in the time of the fulfillment of Joel chapter two, verse eight, when the Bible says in a lot of times he will pour out his spirit upon our flesh. Amen. Amen. We are living in that time. And we see that manifesting today. Joel two twenty eight. Joel two twenty eight. Yes. Amen. Amen. We are seeing that manifestation. The Spirit of God is poured out to the church. He poured out to the young, the old. Amen. Amen. He poured out, hallelujah. Then the old ones, hallelujah, are seeing vision. The young one, the young ones are seeing vision. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Amen. These are the seasons of revelation or the full plan and manifestation of the full plan of God. What was written 2,000 years ago, what was spoken 4,000 years ago, a lot of things are spoken concerning it today are manifesting. We see it happening. So now I'm going to go strictly straight into the message where we talk, where, uh, we talk message that speaks about it. It says, the just shall live by faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. This is the tenets of what Paul spoke to the Galatian church and the church in Rome, the Romans, the gospel of Paul to the Romans. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Amen. The of, of, of Paul to the Romans, which we normally call the book of what? The gospel of Romans. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 in Old Testament, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are speaking specifically where he said the righteous will live by faith. What does it mean to be righteous? First we start with righteous. Who is the righteous? And what does it mean to be righteous? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The righteous, the righteous is means or righteousness means to be what? It means right to be God. justified. To be justified mm -hmm. meaning to be in the right standing before God. Amen. To be in the right standing before God. Amen. So in the context, it means the same thing in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It also means the same thing in the New Testament. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the context of Malachi 2 4, hallelujah. Habakkuk. As Habakkuk 2 4, mm -hmm. thank you. As they relate to the time they lived, the story back then, right. it's also what we see happening today. Amen. What was Habakkuk prophecy? Mm -hmm. What was he speaking about? Yes. There was a lot of issues, things that were going on in the time when Habakkuk made the revelation, the prophetic That's right. revelation. Amen. The nation of Israel was going through a tumor. There was there was <clears throat> all kinds of uh, atrocities going on, and hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Habakkuk was prompted to ask God, why couldn't you do something? Because of the atrocities going on, the yes. injustice. Yes. The perversion of the temple of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The lawless, the lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Amen. The the life of debauchery and mm -hmm. unholy life. My God. The lack of respect for the things of God. We see that happening today. Yes. And also the blatant disrespect for, for life. Yes. And the rights of others. We see that happening today. Amen. And Prophet Habakkuk asked God, why don't you do something? Amen. Why don't you do something? Your world that you have created, the universe that you have made is falling apart. Why don't you do something? Yes. That's why the Lord Habakkuk wrote this book. That he, uh, uh, the, the, the prophetic revelation of God's message. Amen. Amen. So, the message here in the Joshua shall live by faith, which is very have been popularized in the New Testament. Paul picked on it and, and also made references to it in the mm -hmm. book of Romans chapter 1 verse 8 and also in Galatians. Yes. Paul specifically was referring to these people, the early church, consigning what was going on, the, uh, the um, persecutions that would come to the church. Yes. The decadence, moral decadence that was happening, particularly even in Rome at the time Paul wrote the epistle to the Roman church. Amen. Rome was a place where there were a lot of immorality, a lot of decadence was going on. True. And the gospel was just in birth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we see that happening now where the gospel is being stifled. Amen. By worldly lifestyle and the sin and decadence, moral decadence. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, amen. Praise the Lord. So, the full test on the Muhammad chapter 2 verse 4 says, the, the whole verse says, Behold, his soul is puffed up. It's not upright within him, but righteous shall live by his faith. Faith, amen. His soul is a symbolic reference to Babylonians. These were the nations that God had allowed. Babylonians, we also refer to the Chaldeans. Some people call them Chaldeans, call them Chaldeans. These were the nations that came, the Lord has allowed or sent to come and cut away the people of Israel to Babylon. Yes. Seventy years of prophecy of Jeremiah. They will remain there as a discipline, as a chastisement. Amen. Amen. For stepping away from God, uh, uh, for 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 their atrocities. Amen. Amen. God sent this nation, this mighty army of Chaldeans, of Babylonians, 
to come in and ravage the land and cut all the people of Israel back then in the Old Testament and take them into captivity. That was when we read about Daniel. We heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which was, uh, amen. We also learned about the story of Esther. Mordecai. We heard about the story of Mordecai. Then we heard about Ezra. Then we heard about what? Amen. Nehemiah. All of these people were people who came because of the captivity. We heard about their story, their life story. Amen. Their success stories, their triumph, and their struggles. I mean, if you relate to the context of present day life, what is going on within the Christendom, the men, and what is going on generally in life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We, over the past one year, to go into two years, there's been this. Uh, literature or language mm -hmm. that have dominated the airwaves, the virus, the pandemic, mm -hmm. the virus, Truth. amen, right, the vaccine, mm -hmm. the unvaccinated, the vaccine, the, uh, what they call it, the booster shot, mm -hmm. right, and this is what is dominate the lexicon of our language, right, yes. in the media and in the families, in schools, everywhere, this is what everyone talks about, wearing masks and putting on masks and safety and all of that stuff. And, and we can look at it as like the Babylonians. Amen. Hallelujah. We can look at an enemy invasion. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. You're fighting what you do not see. You don't see the virus with your own physical eyes, but you see what it can do. Amen. Amen. You see what it can do. You know, in the Old Testament, a thing like this is not considered as a medical only. It's looked upon in spiritual perspective. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament, even in the Bible, the Bible referred to certain illnesses that is not, uh, that is airborne, that is contagious. Bible looked at it as what? It looked at it as an affliction. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Mordecai, um, I thought Mordecai, Habakkuk looked at this time when the Babylonian came in and ravaged and took away the children of Israel. And we are not saying here that every problem society have is as a result of unrighteousness or because of sin. But yes, this could be as a result of sin. Amen? It could be, it could be as a result of greed. It could be as a, as a result of wickedness. Mm -hmm. It could be as a result of lack of righteousness, lack of salvation. Hallelujah. We are money, have become profit, have, over, have become uh, uh, profit, have risen to a point where human life was no longer considered essential. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Habakkuk says, despite the fact that the enemy, which was the Babylonians, came in. See, when things are happening and the enemy is ravaging and destroying things with their ferocity and anger. And, and, and it, 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 if you haven't seen the, uh, I've seen a bit of the movie of uh, the Vikings and I can see what they could do. I've seen this, the movies written by ancient Roman army what they could do. They come like white locusts. Mm -hmm. they, they tear through villages and tear through communities with, wow. with, with sw like swarm of bees mm -hmm. and uh, locusts and eat up everything mm -hmm. uh, available and tear down the whole community, mm -hmm. capture the young ones, wipe out the entire elders and, and the place burn down what was left. Yes. So anything that comes in a form where it becomes an, uh, uh, an enemy to life, right. a threat to life, Amen. it becomes, looked at it spiritually, <clears throat> like the Babylonians, when they come in, they come in herds of mighty armies. These way guys were great soldiers. Babylonians were the most powerful in their time. They were the most powerful militarily. Hallelujah. Amen. In their time, in Amen. their generation, they came into Israel like white locusts mm -hmm. and tore up the whole place, captured them and grabbed them forcefully, mm -hmm. not with negotiation, right. not through court order. They came in, grabbed them, and Amen, mm -hmm. wiped out and the they temples the were devastated yeah. and ruined the temple of God. Mm -hmm. This God said he allowed he sent them mm -hmm. as a sign of chastisement. Amen. But Habakkuk who was who brought this prophecy was asking God, why don't you do something? But God now allowed this to happen. Mm -hmm. And the Babylonians now came in and they started out from the from uh, from the northern kingdom. Israel had southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. They took over the southern kingdom and they were moving down to the northern kingdom to also white, take over the whole country. Mm -hmm. And so when Habakkuk began to make this prediction, but at the end now, that was why he said their heart was puffed up. Amen. The heart of the Babylonians, because they, were, they are free to do as they will because yes. God was using them to teach these people. But Habakkuk also know that even in the midst of the devastation that was going on, there were remnants. Mm -hmm. 
there will be remnant because God is merciful. Amen. Even in the midst of what we are going through today, there will be remnant because God is the God of just. Amen? Amen. He's the God of mercy. Bible says his blessings are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Even where we are unfaithful, when we are remain hallowed, broken his covenant, broken his laws, God still remains faithful. Amen. 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 He still remains committed to us because he first loved us. Before we even know there's one called God. He already Amen. been there before and he will continue to be there for us. Amen. Amen. So Habakkuk says in Habakkuk 2 4, he says, Behold, his soul is puffed up. It's not upright within him because of pride. But the righteous shall live. You hear what he's saying? Come on, church. Hallelujah. I don't are you understanding what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Habakkuk is saying, even though the, the, the heart of the Babylonians who God had right had allowed or sent in to cut the children of Israel, to carry them and take them out of their home country to inconvenience them, make them uncomfortable, and take them to a promise there, to a land, until such a time when God, hallelujah, had permitted them to return to their homeland. Habakkuk says, the just, even in the midst, listen to this, the just shall live by faith. Amen. So what does it mean to be just? It's to be right before God. Amen? Amen. God is not unjust. He said, he said he will reward you, amen, for your love. Your tears in the dark, God is storing up your tears. The Bible says God stores up as a for memorial. Uh, amen. Those who sow in the dark yes, will be rewarded Lord. in the open. Amen. Your kindness, your grace that you have, mag your magnanimity, Hallelujah. your kindness that you have exhibited to others, God said it will not go unrewarded. Amen. Amen. Justification. Amen. As we say here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Justification is to be right before God. Galatians chapter 11, which Paul was talking to the church in Galatia. If you understand the people that live in Galatia, the people in Galatia, we are people who live Galatia. The province was pretty much close to what we used to call Greek today. Thessalonians, Thessalonians, the church in Corinthians and Thessalonians and Galatia. They were all part of what later become Greek, Greece. Amen. Amen. And in ancient time, Greece was known as what? A home of philosophers, great philosophers. They were intellectuals. Amen. And that was why Paul said, God sent Paul, who was well read, well studied, to go to these places where these individuals would question everything. Amen. This was where we had the great philosophers, Aristotle, Socrates, all of these ancient philosophers came from this province. This were combination of places that made up of the what we with the Corinthians and, and, and the Galatians, amen. Praise of Paul made a missionary journey in this place. Amen. He taught in all of their all of their temples and disputed over their belief in their knowledge and their gods. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Paul is saying that all of the things that they were the persecutions and the challenge and all the atrocities and the things that made out for the children of God. That Paul borrowed that word while he was teaching them, amen, and perfecting their confidence that to overcome the trials and the challenges that life brings, only the just shall live by faith, amen, not by the word. And now bringing it closer, Paul also, because these guys were in and bringing it back to Israel, the just shall live by faith. Paul is also reminding the children of Israel, the just shall live by faith, both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Both to the saved and the unsaved. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise it's the, Lord. the same measurement. Praise the Lord. Praise that the, the Lord. just shall live by faith. We live by faith, not by works, not because of the law. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. We live by faith, not because of our works. And to remind us about that, Amen. That was what was the message. <clears throat> that we heard concerning Abraham. Amen? In the book of Genesis, they said Abraham was counted righteous, not because he saw Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen? Not because he was the perfect man, the most perfect man, but because Abraham, amen, believed. And so he was counted righteous because by faith, Abraham believed the God that spoke to him to leave his hometown and go to this strange land was amen the true right God so it was counted for him righteous Hallelujah. amen so we are justified as children of the living God not because of works but because of our faith because works is not enough 
Amen. To justify us, to inherit the prize, the crown. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. not because of our works. It's by grace of God that we are saved. Amen. Christians are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9 speaks about faith. Christians are justified. We are justified not because of our works, not because of our kindness, not because of the, the, we bought somebody shoes, Amen. or because you fed somebody Hallelujah. food, or because you lent somebody your jacket. Amen. These are good virtue. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. But yet, amen, our faith comes from believing in God through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. We walk in faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Only by faith in Christ we are made righteous. There's no any other way. Jesus said that man shall be justified except through the Son of God. Jesus Christ, not through prophets. All of these men, they were precursor. They were pointing fingers. Amen? Amen. They were the ones that were leading us to the Holy One of God, Jesus Christ. Just as when the John the Baptist showed up on the scene. He said, yet, amen, Amen. yet I am the foreigner to pave the way for the one that is coming. The one whom I am not even worthy to unbutton. Hallelujah. His sandals. Amen. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit, but I will baptize you with water. John the Baptist did not make himself equal with God. When Jesus, with Christ, when Christ emerged, John the Baptist retrieved. Amen. Amen. He retrieved, went back into the shadows. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Christ came to finish up what John the Baptist started because he was the right one, the righteousness of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So Paul further ex expounded on this truth in Galatians 2, 16, saying, We know that a person is not justified by the law. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Because Galatians church speaks. Remember what I talk about in introduction when I talk about the people in Galatia? Amen. These were people who would dispute you. They would argue over rationalities. Amen. They wear your statements. What to wear? To see. Amen. Whether it match with their belief. Amen. Amen. So in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, Paul saying, We know that a person is not justified by works. But in our in, in the world today, people are justified by works. Amen. Amen. You see an S criminal. He's being walked in red carpet, glorified, given a word and given a national honor. Somebody who have done evil in their or the past life. They now some of them are still even doing it in the secret. People who are given awards and glorified in movies and some music industries. Amen. Many of them are not righteous individuals. What sell now is no longer righteousness. It's perversion. Amen. Yeah. Immorality. Crudeness. Amen. That's what, what is marketable. What is appealing to the world, our system. Amen. It's not decency. Amen. In fact, decency has been jettisoned out of the windows, out of the doors, in our moral life, in our society, in our academic institutions. Amen. Amen. As long as you don't get caught. And the same person who is being praised today mm. can be tomorrow maligned and condemned. When they become obvious, people can no longer tolerate it anymore. They use him as a scapegoat. Yet, when he was perpetrating evil, nobody raised an eyebrow. Yeah. Sure. Because he wasn't caught. Amen. Amen. So Paul is saying Galatians 2 16, we know that a person is not justified by works, not because of your skills or your talents or your accents or because of you could speak eloquently. That is for the word system. The word admire people who speaks in the way that tick their fancy, mm -hmm. that tickles their, their fancy and, and feed on their ignorant. Amen. Praise the Lord. They Amen. get excited when people when, when people come in and lie to them and, and fill their ignorance with lies. And they get excited. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So it, it's, it's not justified by law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. So we also have what? Believed. Galatians chapter 2, 16. We also believed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just Hallelujah. like Abraham believed in Genesis. When God spoke to him and asked him to leave his hometown, Abraham believed. Amen. Amen. Going to a place he never went before. Everybody want to go to a nice country, migrate to good countries with great potential. Amen. Where there's great hope and life and privileges. 
right? Amen. But yes. Abraham was leaving home not knowing where he was going, but he believed. He was armed by what? Faith in God. Yes. Faith is when you take that step not knowing. Amen. Amen. Not knowing what is waiting for you down there. When you take those steps, leap of faith, rising up, not knowing whether it will work out or not. But you're trusting in God, not just that you're taking that faith, that step, but you're taking a believing that God is right there waiting for you. Yes. I heard a story by a pastor who said his wife, him and his wife were, uh, his wife was at the backyard. She was cleaning the backyard and they had a tree in the backyard. He didn't explain why the wife climbed the tree. But he said the wife called on him to come help. She screamed for help. He ran out. And when he went up there, she was stuck on the tree. She couldn't come down because she had clamped up to a point where she couldn't come down. She became terrified. She needed help. So he said, jump. He called her by name and said, jump. <coughs> the wife looked at him and said, no, go get the ladder. She said, no, honey, jump. I will catch you. The wife said, no, go get the ladder. So he went and got the ladder and she climbed. She came down from the tree on the ladder. The wife did not trust him enough. Her faith was not yes. strong enough yes. to believe that if she let go of the tree, that the husband will catch her. That's Amen. why she did not put her faith on him. Right. But our faith in God, it's not like faith in man. Amen. 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 We trust God with everything we have. Abraham left a comfort home. He left familiar tread to tread to the unfamiliar. Amen. Amen. Because God, he that spoke to him is able, more than able, as the Bible says. We serve a God that is more than able. Amen. We serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can think and Hallelujah. ask. According to the power that working in us. The, 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 the main trust, the main trust uh, premise of the script the G, of the gospel of Jesus Christ is based upon hope. Amen. Amen. It's based upon faith. The foundation of Christian faith is upon what? Faith. Believe in the invisible God, knowing that even in your situation, the invisible hand of God, the presence of God is right there with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is the basic tenets of our Christian beliefs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it is upon that foundation of faith through what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that we put our faith and we believe, amen, today. Amen. That our faith, amen, praise the Lord, that our belief and our works, uh, our trust in God is not in vain. It's Hallelujah. Not in vain. Amen. So in that Galatians 6.16, Paul said that, that we know that a person is not justified by works of the law. Because if, we are, if, it's, if it is solely based upon the law, Amen. We will all not be. Amen. We will all not be what? We will all not be counted righteous. Amen. To merit eternal life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So because it is not by works, because if it's by works, it will be only solely for certain privileged individuals. Just like some people who have money, they can afford certain high profile lawyers to defend them in a case. You can afford a very high profile lawyer. But in this case, we have a mediator, Jesus Christ, who has gone Hallelujah. above and ahead yes. for us. Thank who you, is Jesus. interceding amen. on our behalf. Hallelujah. That if you believe and you have faith in God, amen, praise the Lord, you will be justified. Amen. Hallelujah. Made righteous by Christ, not because of the law. Because what the law could not do for us, yes. for you and I, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ did it for us when he died on the cross of Calvary. That we might be justified and be right Amen. before God. Because righteousness before God is what we need. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we also have belief, Paul says, in Christ. In order to be justified by faith in Christ. Not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will what? Be justified. No one. No right. one will be justified. How many sheep and oxen and cattle will you offer to appease for your sin? Praise the Lord. How many confections will you make to the Reverend Father or to your pastor that will justify your sin? Because man, by nature, is sinful. Yes. Man is unrighteous. The Bible says, hallelujah. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can tell it? But by faith, 
Amen. Through Jesus, our relationship with Jesus Christ, we have been made right before God. Amen. Not because we can work it, not because we can we know all the know hows, but because we know there's someone, a perfect sacrifice that has been offered on our behalf two thousand years ago. Thank you, Jesus. And his name is Jesus Christ. Not any prophet, because the prophets are men like you and I. Amen. Amen. But Jesus Amen. Christ is God in person. He came down to us in the form of a man. That he lives in our midst. Yes. Feel what we feel. He felt hunger. He felt homelessness. He felt had betrayals. He felt abandonment. He felt lack. He felt the pain. He felt the chastisement. Mm -hmm. He felt the weeping. Hallelujah. He felt the mocking. He felt betrayals. Hallelujah. And he faced death. But death did not triumph over him. He went down to the grave. And on the third day, he rose up again Hallelujah. to justify us that Hallelujah. indeed the righteous shall live by faith. Because he made the example of what it means, the supreme sacrifice of the only begotten son. Amen. The only begotten son. So how can you praise a prophet more than the God that came to you in the image of his son? Is that too hard to believe? That God can come to us like a son, so that you will be part of you. Feel what you feel, eat from you, drink with you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Walk in the same environment like we walked walking today. Amen. So he says, it, Paul also says, it is righteousness, it is Christ's righteousness that saves us. And the only way to receive the gifts is to trust Him. To believe him, Bible says, Hallelujah. By faith, no one, no man, without faith, no man can see God. Without faith, how strong is your faith? Amen. How convicting, convincing is your faith? Without faith, no one can see God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Faith is the substance, the things is a belief and trusting in God, even when it is impossible. Even Hallelujah. when it is undoable, even when it is over, is believing in God's power. Amen. Believing in the invisible hand of God that works even in the darkest and most difficult times. Amen. Even in the midst of sicknesses and afflictions and unbelief, faith is believing in the promise of God. Amen. Amen. So we also believe in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith. Not by works. Amen. Amen. Whoever believes in the Son has what? Eternal life. John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Our sole purpose on earth. Look at man. Man is the most beautiful creature made by God. Amen. We Hallelujah. We image of God. We have brains. We can tame any animal. Bring him to subdue, to bow to us. Amen. We, can, we have gone to the moon and gone beyond. Hallelujah. True, true. Beyond the times, man travel. Amen. Travel, we have built planes that could travel in a faster speed. We travel through the oceans, have life under the oceans. Amen. Amen. Group of men traveling in a tube called submarine under the oceans. Yes. Man have developed so much and yet there is more to explore and yes. to develop. Yes. Amen. 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 These are all the gift of God. Amen. Amen. The godliness in us. Because God said, let us make man in our image. But above all, amen. Amen. Above all these great things God has given to us. Amen. amen. He gave us his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him shall what? Amen. Will not have eternal life. Amen. Will have what? Eternal, eternal life. life. Hallelujah. That though we may we may, this life, this area of life, this section of life, this realm of life might end. Hallelujah. 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 In Amen. order to start a new face. Amen. With God in glory. Amen. Habakkuk wrote, the righteous shall live by faith. He was echoing timelessness, a timeless truth. Hallelujah. A timeless truth first model in Abraham in Genesis 15 by 6 when it says Abraham believed the Lord and he credited to him as righteous. We do things not because we can do it, but because God has spoken. Amen. God has instructed us. God has empowered us. 
God has given us the authority to act by faith, to speak to the unbelief. Amen. To go to places that is uncomfortable. I've had testimonies of people who have gone to countries that are swamped areas in the in the Amazons where there are wild aqua uh, snakes and all kinds of aquatic nature that are dangerous to man. People have gone there to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of hope, amen, amen. and transformation to even the most difficult terrains of the world. Not because, amen, they enjoy going there, but because the gospel had to be preached before the return of the Son of Man. The righteousness man live in what we now, amen, so that, amen, we do not face God's judgment. Like the people who lived in the time of Daniel, amen, they faced God's judgment because they abandoned, amen, they abandoned God's plans and purpose for them and began to pursue, amen, life of wanton destructions, injustice was all over. Amen. The temple of God, we are abandoned. Serving God and recognizing His holy days, we are ignored. Praise the Lord. But the purpose God placed on the earth is to know Him and to serve Him. Amen. The Bible says we are the crown of God. We are man is the crown of God creation. We are the peak. That's why God created man last. Amen. We are the peak. Amen. Amen. Of God creation. We are the crown of God creation. We are that we topped it, we trumped it. Amen. Hallelujah. God used us to celebrate his creation. Hallelujah. God used man to celebrate his creation. That's why he created man last and yes. gave us dominion power Amen. and authority to rule over what God has created. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many times I've asked, why did you did you know why God created us last? Did you know why God created man last of all the creations and gave us dominion and authority? You ask people many times, many people say, oh, this and that, and begin to wonder why. Now you know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you may have dominion power. Amen. To rule over what God has created, that you will bring him glory and bring God an honor. Amen. And Amen. adoration. Amen. The just shall live by faith. Reminds us also what Solomon wrote to us when he said, the race is not to the swift, nor is the battle to the strong. But it says what bottle is what? By the grace of God, time and chance made available by God. Amen. That we triumph over the difficulties hallelujah. of life. Whatever we're going through today, we believe, uh, hallelujah, that hallelujah. God knows that today will come. That whatever we, the world is going through today, they will come. That the virus will come. That the difficulties in, uh, 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 people don't have an answers to how to defeat it immediately will come. But at the end, of everything. We know that God is greater than every sickness. He's mightier than every disease. God is more powerful than every affliction. Amen. His Amen. name is Jehovah Shammah. His name is Jehovah Rapha. He is Elohim. He is a mighty God. Amen. Amen. So this morning we say thank you Father. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. That we are not left hallelujah in this world like children without parents. We are not left as orphans. Because we have a heavenly father yes. who have our interest, our best interest at heart. So we glorify his name. We magnify his name. You draw closer to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We think about our life. What ways that brings a uh, question to our righteous state with God? What are some of these things that brings condemnation to us? The Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are called by God. Hallelujah. There's no condemnation for those who are justified. Amen. What, what are the things in life that bring judgment, that bring condemnation to you? So it's time you begin to re-examine your life, especially in these uncertain times and in this uh, season. Hallelujah. That we heard that God spared us. He spared our life for a reason. Thank you, Jesus. That we may praise his name. Amen. That there will be remnant. Mm. That will glorify his name. Hallelujah. Just shall live by, by faith. faith. Hallelujah. God spared us that the remnant will praise him. The reason why God spared you. You were not those who, who perished last year, the year before, last yesterday or last week or the week before. It's because God spared you that you will bring glory to his name. There's an assignment that God has for every one of us. He that will bring glory to his name, that will glorify his name, that will manifest, manifest his glory. Hallelujah. That will praise his name. Hallelujah. That will honor him. 
with everything that he has given to us and bring praise and glory to his wonderful name in the name of Jesus. Not to gallivant, not to get uh, engaged in life of debauchery, and hallelujah, not to engage in perversion, hallelujah, not hallelujah. to engage in, in immorality, hallelujah, not to engage in one of destruction, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, not Lord. to engage in a Purpose. shameful and despicable, hallelujah. hallelujah, in the skippable nature like animals that have no control, that have no sense of, hallelujah, sense of control. You know, animals, when they engage in passion, they have no sense of control. They have no conscience. Amen. They go by their feelings. They go by their passion. But God created us as human because we are reasonable. Amen? We Amen. are reasonable. He, we have conscience. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege that you give to us to come before you this morning to hear your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, for this month of December. Amen. Which is a month of our distinctive favor. Even sometimes we may not see every plan and everything that you will do, but we know you're working overtime on our behalf. Even in the darkness of darkest hours of the storms of life, we know you are there. Even in the most difficult seasons, Amen. we know you are there. Hallelujah. Because this is the promise you made to us even before we were born. That your thoughts you think towards us, the thought of good or evil. For each one of us, you have made provisions good enough to sustain us. Provisions good enough to keep us healthy. Provisions good enough to, to make us to be healthy and, and a productive, thriving individuals. We glorify your name, mighty Father. We bless you because you are the unchangeable God. The same God that was, uh, uh, the same God of yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. I praise you. We glorify your name. We magnify you. The name that I bring every other names, in on earth and even in heavens. Take glory that belongs to you. Take all the honor. Be thou glorified on earth. Be thou glorified in the heavens. Amen. We acknowledge you as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Without you, we are nothing. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And with you, we are something. Lord, I exhort you and I invite you, hallelujah, to move right now into every home, the Holy Spirit. I invite you into every home right now. Speak, hallelujah. Move to my left, to my right. Move in my front and my back. Let there be special visitations in our homes, in our schools and academic institutions, in our government offices. Let there be special visitation in the hospitals, in the beds, for those who are sick. Let there be special visitations. I call on you, Jehovah, El Gebel, mighty God, our warrior, our defender, mighty God. You are merciful. You are kind. You are known to be kind and merciful. That is what Habakkuk was praying and calling on your name. Hallelujah. And exalting you and calling upon your name in your, your, your history that you are a merciful, healing, uh, freedom-giving God, merciful, dispensing God in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. The God that faileth not, you never fail and you will not fail for us because you will never fail by nature. Amen. Hallelujah. You are the almighty God. He that created the heavens and earth, he that keepeth Israel, the Bible says, he neither sleep nor 